Today's episode of the Gold Cast is sponsored by Nail Clippers. Are you tired of your nails just getting so long? Raymond, do you have that situation where you realize it's been uh, six years and you haven't clipped your nails and they're literally down to your knees? Yes, it's actually really awkward. Super awkward. It makes dates virtually impossible. So when you're in that situation, buy nail clippers at a nearby Rite Aid, CVS, Ralph's, Target, virtually anywhere they sell home care products, nail clippers. Now, Raymond, before we get started, why don't you let the Goldcast Nation Bay Area let them know where they can find us. They can f- they can like us at facebook.com slash the goldcast. They can also follow us uh, at the goldcast on Instagram and Twitter at the goldcast underscore. You can also subscribe to us via iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher, all under the same moniker as the goldcast. Subscribe. That way you get notifications about all of our videos. And if you're liking us on Facebook, you're also going to get notifications to our news feed when we post up articles, um, news articles and such, as well as our Instagram posts. They're all linked together. Awesome. Possum. Well, here we go. What a game. I cannot wait to talk about this. We kind of wanted to wait until after game three to a recap so that we had a, a couple games behind us and then like a really good clear view of, of you know, the series midway or almost done. So Warriors come back, big run. We're going to talk all about it. Gold cast, here we go. Let's get busy. San Francisco, are you ready? Are you ready? This is the Gold Cast. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another edition of the Gold Cast. We are the voice of the Bay. I'm your host, Rudy Salisa III, and with me is my brother, my co-host. Raymond Salisa I, baby. Boom! Oh, man. What a game. So, I mean, you know, game two is in the books. Game three is in the books. You know, let's just let's just kind of catch it up to speed. Let's walk, let's walk the whole dub nation through this whole journey with us because we've all been here together let's go through this one more time so you know we win in convincing fashion up by 20 after you know how many turnovers did we have in game two we had a crap ton do you remember was he exactly 20 i think yeah it was like something like that and we were still up by 20 warriors come into cleveland game three has not been kind to us in cleveland i i actually so before the game begins I remember I'm having conversations with friends asking me, what do I expect? I said, this is exactly what I expect. Cleveland's going to come out super hard, no question about it. They're going to really clamp down on defense. They're going to make the necessary adjustments. Crowd is going to be on their side. Kyrie Irving is going to come alive because he plays fantastic at home. Their role players are going to come alive. Role players always do really well on the road. And then the refs are not going to give the Warriors an inch, just like they didn't give Cleveland an inch when they were in at Oracle. So... You know, and what did we get? This is exactly what we got. You know, the first quarter is pretty tight. Warriors, you know, still managing to kind of start to slip ahead. You know what I mean? And then things really, really started to fall apart in about midway through the third quarter. And midway through the third quarter, what I was seeing, Raymond, and then I want to hear your your analysis of the game. But midway through the third quarter, the Warriors start panicking, and they kind of start looking like the Warriors of last year. Like, when the Warriors start panicking, they start getting into this, like, hero iso ball game. You know, and everyone starts becoming, like, like uh, becomes Russell Westbrook. And the, the thing that I thought was really good, that I thought was a good sign, was that we kept getting all of these rebounds, just rebound after rebound after rebound, even into the fr- fourth quarter. But then whoever got the rebound would go rushing down and either make some just off-the-wall three off the wall too, or try to would would uh, you know wouldn't pass the ball. Whoever got the rebound would just drive down and just again playing iso ball hero ball stuff, and it wasn't working. And then then you get to like the last four minutes of the fourth, and then the Warriors really start to calm down. They start to take their time. They go on eleven zero run. Cavs were zero for eight uh, in shooting, and then zero for four in free throws. And then you get KD. That just that walk up three, which is followed by Kyrie Irving trying to drop a three, which he hadn't made a three all night. I'm really surprised. I'm actually really surprised he didn't go into the paint and just go for it. 
And then you get the Iguodala strip, which I thought, I thought, you know, if KD had the offensive dagger with the three, then Iguodala had the defensive dagger with the strip. And then, you know, the rest is history. Warriors win by five. So, Raymond, I'm going to drop it over to you. Tell me what you saw. You know, what was your experience? Because, you know, we didn't see the game together. Uh, Drop it for us. Well, it's similar to what you saw, where typically the Warriors have are really strong in the third quarter. And in this case, the Cavs really kind of dominated the third quarter and the Warriors were totally not playing their typical offensive game. They were rushing the ball. They're playing a lot of ISO, like you said. Um, but that didn't necessarily – I mean the overall stat sheet will tell you something different. I mean Cleveland had 17 assists for the game. Golden State had 29, so they were right up there with their average um, of 20-plus. So uh, they finally tightened things up towards the end of the, four, of the fourth quarter. It started to get into a real nail-biter. We definitely dominated them on the boards, 44 versus 37. 36 of those were defensive rebounds. Cleveland had 27 defensive rebounds. Steals and offensive rebounds were pretty much tied, Cleveland having a slight edge in that regard. But the other interesting thing, going back to rebounds, Curry out-rebounded Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, Kyrie Irving, and uh, Richard Jefferson combined. So Tristan Thompson had two boards. J.R. Smith had one board. Kyrie Irving had six boards. Oh, I'm sorry. Tristan Thompson had three boards. J.R. Smith had one. Kyrie had six. Richard Jefferson, who's been their best bench player, had two boards. And Curry had 13. He outdid that entire group um, single-handedly. And Curry gets a lot of boards. But, I mean, double-doubles with the boards, um, he's had that twice now in these finals runs and he's been playing phenomenal much better than he did the last year even the first year when they won the championship and clay thompson showed up with a vengeance tonight dropping 30 um curry thompson and durant just killed him offensively uh and and even re- in the boards too they durant had eight rebounds uh clay had six so he tied he tied with uh um kyrie irving but um, but you know, Kyrie showed up and James showed up. I was expecting that, especially Kyrie. He's been a little bit quiet. You know, Kevin Love's actually been playing terrific. The last I got to give him credit. The last game, first game, kind of played average, like his season average. He played a season average performance, and then game two and and especially in game three, he was just dominating on the boards. He had like three offensive boards in a row during that spurt that they had in the third quarter, where they really started to take over the momentum. And then he had like six steals for tonight. So defensively. He was really showing up. And this is a guy who's typically better known to be a rather soft player, you know, and you can say he typical Kevin Love at the end of the fourth quarter. I mean, he just came down awkwardly on Durant, you know, but if that ankle ends up haunting him for the fourth game, even though there's nothing they can do about it in, in game four, whether he shows up or not, um, uh, people are going to definitely, you know, start talking that soft game on him. But who cares? This isn't a cleveland cavaliers podcast so i don't really care about love but anyways i just wanted to give him that little quick credit because he has played well and it surprised me because he's not he's a pretty soft player he is but um sorry he i didn't mean to interrupt you but no he's i thought he's played really well in uh in the entire post his uh you know his this three-point game has been on point his rebounds are always pretty dangerous and he he had a couple really big defensive plays tonight that i thought were, were really key to keeping the Cavs in the game yeah, he was harassing. He was doing a really good job of harassing, and he definitely kept them in the game. You know, he had 13 rebounds. I mean, he was he was all over the place. You know, he didn't necessarily put up a lot of points, so but he did the previous two games. Um, so they definitely needed more of him offensively, but he certainly was putting down the effort. So he kind kind of had a Clay Thompson game, like the Clay Thompson the first. Uh, the first game, he kind of played like that and uh, where it didn't really put up much of an offensive effort, but definitely put put his dues in on the defensive side of the ball, whereas Clay Thompson did both things, you know, the last two games. So and he definitely showed up in this game from the beginning to the end. Clay was just locked in much like Curry and Durant. So that was really awesome to see. But um, I was getting nervous towards the end there. And then and then. KD came in and just kind of locked it down and said, you know what, I'm going to keep this train going. And then not only hit the three pointer to put us within a couple points, but then hit the go ahead three where he just walked up and shot it right over LeBron James. And then 
you know, Andre Iguodala with the, and it was a clean play too. And actually LeBron should have got called for a foul right after that because he grabbed Andre's arm and was like spinning him, um, but got away with it. But then again, there was a lot of calls going in Cleveland's way. Naturally, that just always seems to be the case. The home team seems to get favorable calls uh, no matter what. So we, we get favorable calls uh, in Golden State. So um, whatever that was no big surprise but the fact that they overcame this game three to me thinks like this was like the big test because I felt like this was the game where I knew it was going to be a close game I didn't think I didn't know it was going to be a nail biter to the fourth quarter but I thought it would be close but I but more importantly and this is true with the game I thought this is the game where Cleveland's going to give their best punch much like the first game that San Antonio gave uh, Golden State in the semi con- the uh, Western Conference Finals before before the the third quarter where Leonard busted his ankle twice. So this is the best effort we're going to get. Cleveland has scored um, 113 points for two straight games and still is not enough. Um, 132 last time we outscored them and 118 tonight. So this is the best that they can do. We've capped them. At 113, 91, obviously, in the uh, first game where we scored 113 and they only scored 91. So um, the next game is the I expect them to put forth a good effort, but we're most likely going to pull away in the third and fourth. And it's going to be kind of a blowout in your face. I, I do not expect it to be a tight game like this one. I felt like this was a demoralizing, deflating, more so than the 3-1 when you go up 3-1. If you're 3-1, you're like, hey, we're kind of, we still have a win. It's not like the the odds are insurmountable, although no one ever came back from that prior to that series. But at the same time, you still have a win under your belt, so there's still a glimmer of hope. Whereas in this case, it's like um, you have no hope because you have no wins and no one has ever came back from this whatsoever. So I expect a sweep, um, which is awesome. I called it in five, so... Um, I would love – I I, always, I also said that I would love to be proven wrong in this case. So it looks like there's a really, really good chance of that happening here, which will be amazing because it will be another historic record set by this team within the last three years. And it will be the ultimate, the ultimate revenge record. Ultimate, going 16-0. and 0. I never suspected that this was even possible. I, I thought the Warriors in six – I said that I thought LeBron would get you one. I thought Kyrie would get you one, but that whole team couldn't get you four. I, I, I actually underestimated the Warriors' resilience. KD has elevated himself to another level. Steph Curry has finally, I think, quelled the the naysayers and really, really shown up. His, uh, like you talked about, his defensive rebounding was insane. It literally kept us in the game because uh, as what we haven't really touched on yet. The Cavaliers went really flat at the end of the fourth quarter. They missed. They were 0 for 8. And I remember watching those shots and just kind of pulling my hair going, these guys are missing everything. We need to be turning these in. This should, we, should, we should be on a 16-0 run right now. You know, but mm-hmm. we, we went on an 11-0 run and it was, you know, it was really, it was just staying, staying calm, staying cool. And it was kind of strange because, it, you know, the, I, I, I'm not going to speak for the Cavs on this one, but, but I'm going to say this. It was kind of strange to watch, Ray, because you, you started seeing towards the end of the fourth quarter, you start seeing the Cavs are getting jumpy. Even though they're in the lead, they're still getting jumpy. Like, I'm, I, they're, they're, they're forcing shots. They're, they're kind of, they're starting, to, they're starting to go away from what was making it work for them, and they just, nothing seems to land, and the Warriors keep getting the rebounds. They keep getting the rebounds. The thing that was driving me nuts is what I stated earlier, is that the Warriors weren't taking those things, and they, they weren't taking the ball back onto their side of the court, passing it around, passing up great shots for good shots. They were just going for any shot, and I'm like, guys, 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 this is so 20, 20, 20, uh, 2015 Warriors. Come on, come on, don't do this. Don't do this right now. Come on, stop, stop this. What, I don't, what, why are we doing this ISO hero ball stuff? Like, we are way better than this. And this has not worked for us at any point in, in the span of this current team's iteration. And it's definitely not going to work now, game three in Cleveland. So, having said that, the, the Cavs just kind of went flat. Now, what did you see? Did, do you, did you think they froze up? I mean, what, what did you see coming out of the Cavs? Like, what happened to them in, those, in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter? Well, I felt like they, they 
I think their confidence was high. They had momentum in their hands, but the Warriors just hung in there. I think it was a combination of, you know, um, Cavs kind of playing their game and, and trying to play off of the momentum they had built in the third quarter. But the Warriors' defensive resilience, you know, the entire season kind of recaptured they recaptured themselves just in time to close it out because they really kind of let go of themselves in the third quarter when typically and i think it was more psychological than anything else because third quarter is like their strongest quarter for the last three years that's what really shocked me that's what really kind of surprised me and made me stiffen up because i really expected I i fully expected the warriors to go in and just just like knock these dudes on the floor and and then we got knocked on the floor, and then we looked like the team that was desperate, and and you know was losing was losing sight of the game plan, and, and started getting desperate. And I got really nervous. But go ahead, finish your point. And I think the Warriors just tightened it up. You know, at first I thought like maybe Kevin Durant because he missed a couple shots when he first came in the fourth quarter, and I was like, oh man, you know, is he gonna is he gonna have a little a little a little blimp, a little hiccup, you know, where he kind of similar to what he did in the last few games when the Warriors came back 3-1 last year. But uh, but no, he kind of stayed the course and then hit a couple of big, huge threes, one to pull us within, within striking distance and another to put us ahead. And that was just huge, I think, not only for his confidence. I mean, he's played in so many big games. You know, he's gotten to the finals before too, so he's not necessarily unfamiliar with this territory. But at the same time, he, I think he's playing with much more. He's much more relaxed. He's more comfortable. He's more confident, you know, and he has a supporting cast that he knows is going to back him up. So the pressure's off to handle it all himself, much like DeBron feels like he has to do a lot of the times, even though he had Kyrie's... Um, offensive game on point tonight, but uh, it's just too much. Like I said before, like I, 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 like I can see Kyrie and James taking one game, but I can't see each of them taking a game individually with individual performances. They would have to put up 50 and 60 point games in order to do that, and that's just not going to happen against this team. I mean, everybody contributes. If you look, and even in Cleveland this time, as opposed to last game. So in the previous game the Cavaliers played their entire bench and in this game in this game for whatever reason Tyru uh, Tyron Lue decided to not play four of his players and decided to go with a smaller roster smaller in terms of numbers and even though they put up a a better effort it um it still wasn't enough Channing Frye didn't play uh uh, Dante Jones didn't play. James Jones didn't play. Derek Williams, who they got in free agency, did not play at all. He played in the first two games. Channing Fry played. In, all these guys played in the first two games. Minimal. Derek Williams and Channing Fry played meaning meaningful minutes here and there. But other than that, he said, "I'm going to pull these four out and just you know play the rest of the group here." And uh, and even though he got a better effort defensively and offensively, he got offensively he got the exact same thing he got in the previous game in terms of points. Um, it's just not enough. There's just not enough firepower. The Warriors are too good. They're too well-rounded, whereas the Cavs are just a one-trick pony. And in the East, you only need to be a one-trick pony to make it to the finals. It's very true. I've got a couple great questions for you, so get ready. Here's, here's some questions that I have for you. Okay, here we go. Question number one. Is it over? Uh, is it a sweep? I think so. Okay. Question number two, who gets, if it is a sweep and we, we, we end this on Friday, who gets the MVP, Durant, Curry, or do they go co-MVP? They've never gone co-MVP, um, so it'd be Kevin Durant. Okay. Next, do the Warriors and Cavaliers meet for a round four? I don't think so because there's going to be big moves in the East this off season to to disrupt some of the lopsided balance that the Cavs have enjoyed the last three years, and Cavs will get knocked out next year by probably Celtics or somebody on that end who's going to pick up somebody. I, most money's going on the Celtics because they have top picks to go with, um, and uh, so I think they're going to bring in some some big heavy hitters. Okay. If if the LeBron gets and the Cavs get knocked out of the playoffs next year, after that year, does LeBron 
go somewhere else. Hmm. He's a free agent a at the good, end of next year. That's a good question. He might. I don't think, you know, they've been talking about this, you know, uh, I'll tell you who started this this conversation was Jalen Rose started this conversation on first take. And I actually said that and thought that for a long time that I don't believe, I don't believe uh, LeBron will, I, I, maybe he ends his career in Cleveland, but I don't think he, I, he's not going to stay there from now till the end. I, I don't believe that at all. I think he's going to go somewhere else to, to win more championships. I think so. Do the Warriors go back next year again? Yeah, I, I'm not sure what big moves the West is going to make, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to compete with the other teams. But I'm not sure. I don't think the road will be – the road's obviously not going to be as easy because teams are going to stack during free agency. They're going to stack in order to compete. Um, so this is going to be – this is kind of the peak historical year. Uh, the only reason why I say next year there's a good chance they do go for a fourth year in a row, but the reason why I'm kind of doubtful is because I'm not sure if health is going to is going to remain you know as clean slated as it has been this year. It's really hard to stay healthy when you're going to that many finals in a row because you're playing so much extended time. And I know that the Warriors are really good about resting through during the regular season. But I'm not sure if that's going to be enough because you're still playing an extended amount of games, you know, a minimum of 16, you know, maximum of 28 in the postseason on top of 82, you know, during the regular season. So I don't know. I just think, you know, don't be surprised if, you know, health becomes an issue for somebody down the road. You know, Kevin, we saw Kevin Durant get a freak injury. Oh, he's Kevin Durant's only been significantly injured like once. Um, and that's when you miss the 2000, what, 13 or 2014 season. Curry, you know, kind of had early injuries in the beginning of his career, and he's been virtually health free, the exception of you know last year's postseason. So you know, you something like that free. could injury free, injury free. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, you never know. It's it could, you know, it's just like when the Niners had their run, they were super super healthy for three straight years when they were going to the NFC Championship games, and then after that spell, um, it was injury. Injury riddled season after injury riddled season um, just seemed to never end. Never every single week, somebody or more than one guy was going down on IR, including more than half the defensive starters <clears throat> last year. Okay, here's another great question. Once the Warriors, let's say the Warriors don't go next year, which team brings another championship home back home to San Francisco to the Bay first? The 49ers, the Giants, or the Warriors? It's definitely not the 49ers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they still got a ways to go. And it could be the Giants because we are in an odd, odd season. And for whatever reason, they just don't seem to do well in odd seasons. And um, so it, it could be the Giants. The Giants, I, you know, I expect the Giants to make a run next year as opposed to this year where they're just kind of up and down, up and down. Um, and I don't know if they're going to put it all together by the time the All Star break comes. They could, they really could. You know, they they've been so hot and cold this year, mostly cold. So they could put it together and put a late run together, which is typically what they do anyways. They don't necessarily dazzle and overwhelm us during the regular season. It's it's more ebb and flow. And then when the playoffs come, that's when they really tend to turn it on. So that's kind of so it's could be the, the the next team to get us a championship whether it's this year next year um to bring it to the bay will most likely be the warriors it just might not be next year i could be wrong you know you know the spurs could spurs uh looks pretty deadly you know if they get a couple couple more big players maybe they get a big star that comes over they yeah. could uh you know i you know if i were them i would trade marcus aldridge that's what i would do yeah well they were saying maybe maybe chris paul but i just don't see chris paul going because chris paul uh you know he's about to have a max contract over in uh yeah and then he's also he also has a no trade clause either so yeah so they we'll can't see. just get rid of him so if the clippers get no 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 i think i think chris paul's a free agent this year but if he re-signs he gets the max deal for having been with the team i think for like 5 years Hmm. I believe that's how that works. At least that's what I... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I don't know. Anyways, it's been a really good game. Last game coming up. What a journey. Oh, last question. This was... Oh, I knew there was one more. Going 16-0. 
does it now nothing can erase the 73 loss but going 16-0 that avenges it right we we, we avenge losing the 3-1 by by having this the greatest season record and then a perfect playoff record right yep there is no there's no better no better way to do that awesome possum raymond i think that's about it we will uh reconvene uh at the end of the weekend to discuss the hopefully what is the end of the nba finals and a historic run that ends hopefully in 16 and 0 raymond before we leave let them know where can they find you you can find me on Twitter at Ray Solis and on Instagram at Ray Solis One. Um, I've also been playing around with Pinterest. It's actually pretty cool. It, it's pretty cool. I, I didn't realize how cool it was. But, yeah. Uh, it's more of a more of a personal thing. Um, but but uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. That's uh, I, I'm on it. I don't know what the tag is. I don't know how it works. I'm just still fiddling around with it. Mm, but it's cool. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little app. Not sure how it pertains to business yet, but once I figure it out, I'll. Start to make waves there. <laughs> That's awesome. Also, actually, I forgot to say, Goldcast Nation, Dub Nation, it, sound off on any of those questions. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Goldcast. Love to hear it on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Goldcast. Sound off in the comments and let us know how you feel. Answer the questions and just tell me what you think. Tell us what you think. Like, do you think the uh, Warriors go back? Do you think the Cavs go back who do you think is going to win the MVP uh, you know all, all the questions that we we discussed right here feel free to answer back who do you think you know which team is going to deliver another championship first if the Warriors don't deliver it again and yeah so just answer anything you guys think we want to hear it sound off in the comments let us know you can find me at Rudy Solis third Rudy Solis three R D. So concludes another edition of the Goldcast. We are the Voice of the Bay. I'm your host, Rudy Solis III, and with me is my brother, my co-host, Raymond Solis I, baby. Boom! We'll see you next time. Same Goldcast time, same Goldcast channel. This is, is the Goldcast.